What's shaking, everybody? Party people. Here we're back. Oops. I've got cords on cords on cords on cords. So here's what's happening. I've got a fresh mug of hot chocolate. A little bit nicer hot chocolate. And I've got a little bit of time planned out to play Star Fox 64. Not a little bit of time planned out. Like, this is what I want to do. So last time, here, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background here, right? So last time we did the easy route, and this time we're going to do the medium route, or the intermediate route, which our route today is going to be through Corneria to the asteroid field, and then straight down the center, and then come back to uh, Seizure Satellite over here. That's the way it's going to roll. Now, the thing is, this is the thing, right? It's a boat. We did this. The, we did this the first time. The whole run that was great. Well, I kept going. When I first recorded it, I kept going. I was recording it, and uh, I was like, "Well, you know, I'm pretty badass. When I do the intermediate one, I'll go and do it on expert mode." And remember, I haven't played this for. I mean, I've played it since when it came out again, but like, I don't know. Not, I wasn't an expert or anything. I mean, I was an expert at the time. But I definitely wasn't when I tried to play it again. It didn't work very well. So I got through the whole thing no problem. And then I got to the very end with Venom. And God, it was just... That, <laughs> that level was just destroying me. And it's because, like, the teammates were flying in front of me and distracting me. And, like, taking... They were actually kind of working as shields for the the enemies, almost. And I don't It's just... It had been too long for me to be able to play that one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I play this run is all going to be the regular mode, just so we can get through the game and you can kind of see what's going on. And then I'll go back and play it again with expert mode. Maybe it's coming up or at a different time or whatever. But that's the idea. Because it's like, I, I want to get through the whole game. I don't want to get halfway through and then have to sit there and get stuck when I'm in Venom, you know? So that's the idea. But uh, I got a good couple hours worth, and I'm going to have to... I think what I might do is I might put that in there later. Like, when I go through the expert mode version, be like, okay, the intermediate run, here we go. But, of course, it's the second time that I play the game in a long time. So that's kind of what it sounds like when you hear that one. It's like, oh, wow, Zex. Zach's put in three different three different runs on this. Why does it sound like he's hardly done anything? It's like, oh wait, it's because... It's because it was actually recorded on the original time when I hooked this back up again. So now it's... I just finished up doing some of the... Shoot, not, what am I saying? I just finished up doing some of the stuff for Link to the Past randomizer for the... Um, did I get him? Oh, Falco's out. That's too bad. I don't really care. I was doing the uh, the festive randomizer, which I was really excited about. But here's the thing about that is the last game I recorded before doing that one was this one, and this one's like 480p, I think, is the resolution on it. So those settings were still the same when I was doing the uh, Link to the Past one. So the Link to the Past is all fuzzy, and I'm like, God, this thing is rendering fast. Why is it rendering so fast? Why is the file size so small? And I realized oh, it's because it's an insanely low resolution, which, since it's an emulator, it's coming right off the machine, so there's no reason to have it be a low resolution, so... I'm nowhere near done with that run, uh, and there's no problem after that. I'm gonna make sure I set it to actually get 1080 again, so that it looks real nice. Like, the first half of that run is gonna look just... Like, you're playing it on an old tube TV, and the second half is probably gonna look pretty nice. But, uh, you know, it's okay. It's not bad. It's just kind of what it is, and I guess I'll know for next time. I, I haven't been using any emulators as a thing. And on that note, I was using an emulator for Legend of Dragoon because I just could not get it to work the right way. Like, I was running it... Um, well, I was trying to get it to work with my actual PlayStation, but there was no way to hook it up like I have now, so I'm definitely going to go back and hit that up. So there's no glitchiness or anything like that. That's on my to-do list because I love that game. I want to play it, but it just wasn't—it wasn't conducive to the way that I wanted to do it. We're heading out. All aircraft report. Hmm. This hot chocolate is great. It's a little bit cool. I didn't warm it up quite enough, but it's still pretty damn good. Like your father. Damn. Falco ship is under maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so that's the thing, is 
Now that I've got that converter, I've got so many games I want to go play. I want to do N64 games and PlayStation games. I want to go play some Genesis games. It'd be kind of fun. It'd be a good excuse to expand my Genesis library. I don't have a lot of games on there, but there's a few I definitely would like to do. So that'll be fun, too. It's just, it's it's great. I got all these ones that I can go do now, but anything on PlayStation is going to be cool. I actually really want to go and get my PlayStation 1 fixed because it's the original one I've got, but yeah, the disc is messed up. I think I'm... See, I can't remember when I mentioned this, if it was on the run that aired or the one that wasn't, um, but that's the situation is that that PlayStation that I've got is my original PlayStation from when I was a kid, but yeah, from not using it forever, like, it just... the laser's not happy, and so it, it tries to load stuff up, but it gets stuck. I guess it's a pretty common thing. And it's pretty easy to fix, so I want to order that and play all my stuff on my original hardware like that. Like right now, I think I mentioned it before, I'm playing on my original N64, which is really cool, and I'm happy that the controllers still work because the joysticks are known to go out pretty quick, but luckily, never played any Mario Party on here. I think I rented Mario Party 1 once, and that's like the destroyer of controllers. So I was pretty happy that I really didn't play that one too much. So most of my controllers are pretty okay. Which is nice. Oh, pro. Pro. So you guys have seen this. You've seen the meteor stuff. I want to do the... I think you can... Well, I think you have to. I think you have to use the warp to get to Katana, which is our next destination. And that's what we're going to hit up. I don't just fly up and over it. <laughs> Hit the bricks. So yeah, that's that's what's kind of going on here. Is it's the day after Christmas right now. I was gonna try and do the Legend of Zelda one on Christmas, but like I was saying in there, I just got too drunk on Christmas Christmas Eve and had a super hangover on Christmas Day, so it just wasn't gonna happen. But that's all right. You know, it's still... I consider everything until New Year's Day still part of that nice Christmassy area where it's just vacation, nice and laid back, just relax. You know how it goes. They're on me. I'm the biggest part of this game now, I've come to realize since playing it again for the Let's Play, is not shooting Peppy. Or not shooting my own people. I just really love to fly in front of me. It's tough. The, the temptation is real. Not the temptation, but I don't want to shoot them. But it's just something that's moving. It's like a cat. It's like they don't want to kill everything. But they have to. The enemy's coming from behind. They probably do want to kill everything. Freaking cats are insane. Don't you see that? It didn't... That worked against me. I was trying to use the lock-on with a bomb, but I hit the lock-on and the bomb. I'm going to try and get this. Let's see, where is it? There we go. Get all those guys, the little spider, spider ships, or whatever the heck they're called, I don't know. Got these meatballs. Meatballs are shooting shit at us. I hate this. I was saying it before, but I really hate it because you can't tell where the projectiles are. They go at such a terrible, res or a terrible resolution, a terrible speed, and then you can't really tell where they're, where they're at when they get up close to you. You tell them slip. Meatballs. Kind of. <laughs> there we go. If Falco was here, he would have shot that, but luckily we know. We know where to go. Alright, here's what we're doing. We're taking our exit right now. Here's the off ramp. Off ramp, on ramp. To the warp action. One more, and kick it. Hell yeah. Hyperspace, baby. Ugh, this hot chocolate has got marshmallows in it, and it's just not... They're, like, chewy. But they're not chewy, like, in a nice... I think Carnation has it where they've got kind of chewy, but they're, like, something you can sink your teeth into. This is, like, the Starbucks one, and the chocolate tastes really good, but the marshmallows are... And leave a little something to be desired, you know what I'm saying? 
collect like a hundred friggin' bombs here. I'm pretty sure the reason they want you to get the bombs is to blow all this stuff up. You know, I was saying in my first run that I just, I stopped using bombs, and that's not true. I did stop relying on them, but if you're trying to get the medals, like, by getting enough kills, you definitely want to use the bombs, because it's just, I don't know, you get, like, have to use them almost. It seems like it, anyway. Granted, I'm not trying to get the medals, I've already got all of them on this cartridge, so there's no reason for me to do it. But, you know. This is the part of Star Trek they don't show you when you're going through hyperspace and warps and crap. This is actually what you see. You got Worf sitting up there with a little joystick, you know, shooting all these asteroids and crap as they're flying through. That's what they're actually doing. Yeah, they're def they definitely want you to use bombs at this part. Look at this. These things spawn bombs. Hell yeah. So that should bring us to Katana. Or Katain... Whatever it is. So we're gonna do this, and then... I think that's all I'm gonna be able to fit in this episode here. Katina, is Katina not Katana. Will you help him out? Affirmative, General. Good luck. Going in. You know, I should go back and play the original Star Fox as well. On, help is on the way. I actually only recently beat that once I got my Super Nintendo Classic, so that was kind of cool. Because I played it so much as a, as a kid, I thought it was cool because of the graphics and everything. But uh, I was never able to beat it because it's... I don't know, the frame rate is awful, <laughs> for one thing, because they put so much into the graphics and the gameplay or whatever. I never did get around to beating it until I got that classic, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to really try and do it here. Because the difficulty compared to that with this game is night and day. Like, it's so much easier to play this game. It's so much more forgiving. But the frame rate on here is really good, and the controls are super good. Approaching. Which is also cool. Get the third ring, yes. You're not getting away that easy. Yeah. And yeah, the problem with this level is like your allies are just as fragile as the enemy, so you can unit. you Come can really hit them by accident, pretty bad. But yeah, so I'm gonna remember what I didn't say or what I said in the other one and what I didn't. And so if you've ever seen Independence Day, you're pretty much looking at a game version of that. Right here. Got the alien mothership or enemy mothership. Boy, I sure hope they don't deploy a bunch of fighters. Oh, wait. That's exactly what they're gonna do. Ow! What the hell? So that's what- when I go back and I play the- the- was it the expert mode, you'll kind of see that's what the biggest part was that was killing me on here. Is that you lose your wings, and you lose your wings super easy. And then it's really, really hard to get them back again, or to keep them even when you get them. So when you lose your wings, you lose your your double attack, or whatever, your upgrades for it. And so that really sucks. Here's another thing too that I just noticed, it's so crazy, I noticed this after I was watching the, the Let's Play of it, um, that I was doing. Was there's those little parts on the front of my ship, right? So you can see on the bottom down there. Those little rods? I thought those were like the landing, um, like pontoons or something like that, but they're not. They're the lasers. They're actually like the R-Wings lasers. Because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure out why the, all the wingmen didn't have them, but I did, and it's because you get them from the upgrades. When you don't have the upgrade, that's just a single one, and it kind of, they, they tuck under, whatever. But when you get them, they drop down. Take that out of context. Alright, we gotta get rid of these hatches. They're going down. That was... I'm not gonna yell timber, though. <laughs> so 
the idea here is if you don't get this in time, they charge up, or the ship charges up and pretty much just nukes that little pyramid command center down there. And we're not going to let that happen. Try and cover our buddies. Whoa, whoa. Wait for him to open the gates again. Yeah, you really don't want to use bombs here. Because you will absolutely incinerate any of your people. Well, there it is. It's tough to see. It's kind of camouflaged. But yeah, you'll totally incinerate all of your guys. <laughs> like, you'll get the bad guys. But you'll knock all the good guys out, too. Alright, so now we gotta take out this core. Which is gonna be not too bad. Try and save our guy here. And take his kill. Alright, coming around for the final approach. This should be the nail in the coffin. Oh, look at that. I took out two guys on my way. You got it, Bill. No problem. No problem. You gotta have a little bit of cleanup after this, though, just so you know. I have the spoon still in here. Spoon. Go over there. It's cool. It shows you all the people that you saved yet, or that didn't get killed. So I did a pretty good job on that one. Got an entire flight squadron there yet. I'm glad we're on the same team, Fox. But yeah, look at that. See, you don't have the. You owe me one. You don't have the little like the the lasers sitting down on their R wings. It's only on mine. Cause they're just using their regular single power up one. That's kind of fun. Worth noting. So I didn't notice that at all until now. But, well, that's it for this episode. When we come back, let's finish up the rest of the intermediate route, shall we? See you then.